I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Last day of the retreat in Jesus' name. Without any doubt, since we started on Thursday, the Lord has been working with us. The Lord has ministered unto us through our Father in the Lord and through various anointed ministers of the gospel. And all these ministers have poured out their heart and the heart of the Lord unto us. That as we prepare you, we are preparing ourselves so that at the end of the day, both we, the preachers, and you, the hearers, together we rejoice in glory. And I am praying that we all make it to the end in Jesus' name. I'm here to let you know that it is one thing to begin a race. It is another thing to finish that race. It is one thing to start well. It is another thing to finish well. It is one thing to begin strong. It is another thing to finish strong. I pray you will finish strong in Jesus' name. That is why at this time we are looking at the message titled Running the Race Courageously. Running the Race. Which race are we talking about? We are talking about the Christian race. Which race are we talking about? We are talking about the race to heaven because in life generally we are all in a race. Whether you are a believer or you are not a believer. Whether you are a Christian or you are non-Christian we are all in a race but what determines the difference between us is the goal before us. The end of that race. The journey in which we have embarked upon whether uh, you are some people are in the race to become a politician, some are in the race to become worthy or rich in the things of this life, some are in the race to become academically uh, 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 up there, some are in the race for different, some are in the race for beauty contest, but we are in the race for heaven. I say we are in the race for heaven and we will make it to the end in Jesus' name understand that as we say we are in the raid in the race there are some people that started the race and today they are no more some of them have even died and gone uh, to wherever they have ended as we talk about the race let me quickly tell us few things uh, about a race again the race is something that everybody run the difference is whether you are running according to the will of God the plan and the purpose of God or you are running according to the will and the plan of man. Whether you are running to please the Lord or you are running to please the world, that is what makes the race that we are all running. Understand, race is a goal, a goal that must be pursued with speed, with focus, and with determination. It's a race that we pursue anybody in life, whenever they say they're in a race, they are always in a haste to get to that ending. And I can tell you that we are not letting down, we are not letting up our determination to make it to heaven and we'll get there in Jesus' name. When we talk about the race, race takes a lot of energy to do if it must be successful. If you must finish well, if I must finish well, then we need to put in a lot of energy, a lot of strength into it. Race is run with other competitors running along with us. Let's take a quick look at the book of Corinthians. I, I, I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And see what the Lord is saying concerning this race that we are engaged in. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run 
that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for, mal, for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we, what kind of crown? An incorruptible. I dare for so wrong. And you dare for so wrong. Not as uncertainly. So fight I. Not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body. And bring it unto subjection. Lest that by enemies. When I have preached to others. I myself should be a cast away. That is why. I'm telling us. That race. The race in which we are in. Is being run by other people, competitors, competitors. And uh, with these competitors in the race, as we saw it in verse 24, understand that not everyone will make it to the end. The Bible says, they that run in that race run all, run all, but one receiveth the price. I pray you will receive the price in Jesus' name. I told us that we're all in the race. That the race is a goal that must be pursued with speed, with focus and determination. That is a race that requires a lot of energy and the totality of our life. I told us that there are other competitors. You are in that race, I'm in that race, others are in the same race. And as we are in the race, understand some are tripping and falling. Some are being disqualified. You will not be disqualified in Jesus' name. The race, if it is something we all engage in. If it is something that must be pursued with speed, with focus and determination, if it is something that takes all the energy and the strength that we need, especially when you look at the athletes, they put in all the muscle, all the vein, the bone, everything comes to work. Their brain is calculating. They want to move at a very, very fast rate. It, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy, and if that is the case with a lot of other people in the race, understand also that there are spectators. There are people that are watching you. There are people that are watching me to see whether you will win that race, and I declare in the name of the Lord, you will win. There are people that are watching you, and quite a number of them, God, your maker, Jesus, your savior, they are watching whether you will make it to the very end. The angels in heaven that have been assigned to you, they are watching whether you will make it to heaven. The heroes of faith, those that have come before us and now are in glory, they went through the trials of life, the battles of life, the storms of life, they passed through the flood, they passed through the fire, they passed through everything, they made it to the very end. They are watching whether you will run the way they run, whether you will endure the way they endure. Um, I pray by the grace of God, we will make it to the end in Jesus' name. But now understand. That the enemy of your soul, the devil, is also watching. How you are running and strategizing how to hinder you from making it. He will fail. I said he will fail. In the name of Jesus, the demons are also watching. How you are running to see whether they will lose and you will win. And the line is drawn already. The battle line is drawn. As for me, I know who is going to win. I know as for you who is going to win. Those of you that believe the Lord holding on firm to the profession of your faith, not minding what happens in life. Together we are winning in Jesus' name. But now pay attention. There are people in the world that are watching. Your fellow believer is watching you. The unbelievers are also watching you. The people you have preached unto, they are watching you. The people you never got to preach unto, but they saw your life. They were observing your life. And then they were admiring your life. And then when the storm rages, when the wind blows, they are watching whether you will make it. I declare in the name of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, that we will make it to the end in Jesus' name. So there are competitors. There are competitors. 
There are come, and then if all these are there, we need to understand that there is need for preparation. The race requires a thorough preparation, and this preparation must include all kinds of sacrifices that we can make. And uh, if you look at the people of the world, those that play soccer, people of the world, those that sing uh, for uh, for making money, uh, if you look at the people of the world, the, model, the modeling people of the world, if you look at the athletes of the world, they make a lot of sacrifices to perform and to be where they are. And we, as believers, cannot do less. I say we cannot do less. And that is why whatever preparation, physical preparation, spiritual preparation, psychological preparation that we need to make, we will make everything and then we will make it to glory in Jesus' name. So then we understand that the Christian race is a race that we must win because it's one of two things. It's either you win it or you lose it. Why are we talking this way? Because, again, not all that started were able to finish up. Turn with me your Bible to the second book of Samuel, chapter 1, verse 27. Second Samuel, chapter 1, verse 27. And see what the scripture is saying concerning the possibility of losing the race. We'll read verse 27 and then we'll back up a little bit. It says, how are the mighty falling and the weapons of war perished? How are the mighty falling and the weapons of war perished? Now back up to verse 19. And see why you are running the race effectively, successfully. How you are the, 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 the favorite of the Lord. The beauty in the eye of the Lord. The glory of your time. Verse 19. It says, the beauty of Israel is slain upon the high, thy high places. How are the mighty falling? Tell it not in God. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gibeah, let there be no dew. Neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offering. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain. From the fat of the mighty, the bow, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul. I pray the world will not weep over you. I pray that heaven will not weep over you. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothes you in scarlet with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thy high places, I pray. After you have gone up so high, you will not fall in Jesus' name. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Everybody read verse 27. How are the mighty fallen? How are the mighty fallen? Mighty in faith. Mighty in world, mighty in miracles, signs, and wonders. How are they falling? How are they falling? And as you look at your life, as you look at your environment, you will come to understand that when you came to the Lord, when you came to the faith, there are some people, if you are vigilant enough, there are people that have been in the race ahead of you, that you are even thinking and praying, Lord, this is a good example to follow, and then you are aspiring to be like them, but as time passes by, you look around and such people are no more in the faith. 
You look around, some people have been put into a corner, deceived by the enemy. Such people, such people, you know, uh, there is this particular individual years back that was a worker in our church, the Palai Bible Church. Not just a worker, but a key leader, a key leader, a coordinator in the church. And all of a sudden, the enemy deceived him. And then he left the church. And after some time, he came back. Coming back now, not coming back to the church. He came back to see the general superintendent for whatsoever reason. And then by the time he came, his BS has so been. Now he had grown beers. And then, now he is called a prophet. And now the way he's not talking, now I am prophet B. I am prophet that. He has been deceived. Deceived. I pray you don't be deceived in Jesus' name. And then when you look at the life, when you look at the, uh, everything, there is nothing to correlate relationship with God. All that and just wanting to be called a prophet. I pray that Evil power of darkness will not prevail against you in Jesus' name. We are running to win a prize, and it is a race that must be run with the only single option of winning. There is no other option. In my own dictionary, there is no option of losing. There is no maybe I will fail. I will win, and you will win. I will succeed, and you will succeed in Jesus' name. It's lost. A, 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 a loss. It's not for you. It's not for me. Paul indicated the pattern of running that wins the prize and admonish us to so run that we may obtain. And if we are going to run to obtain the prize that is set before us, what then do we do? We run the race with conviction. Conviction. How saved are you? How saved are we? Are you really convinced that a man can live above sin? Are you really convinced that a man can live above self and live above the world and live above devil? Are you really, really convinced that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God? Or you think you can still live a wishy-washy life and then make it to heaven? Are you really convicted of your sin, of your transgression? Are you saved? Are you born again? Are you washed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus? So you must run the race with conviction. Conviction. And then you run the race with caution. There are a lot of traps on the way. There are a lot of port uh, portals on the way. There are a lot of things the enemy wants to do to bring you down, to destroy you, to eliminate you, and then make you regret at the end of your life. So we run with Caution, with caution. That is why First Corinthians chapter 9, we read this before, but let's look at just uh, the 26th verse over there and see what the word of the Lord says. It says, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. We run the race with conviction. We run it with caution. We run with concentration. Concentration. That's why I said it is something we run with speed, with focus and determination. We run with concentration. No distraction in any way or form. Women, men, money, wealth, popularity, fame, position, power, nothing of all those will distract us in Jesus' name. We run the race also with the scripture as our companion. We run with a companion in the scripture because the time in which we live is such a time that requires you and me being serious with our Bible. It's such a time that if care is not taken, even the very elect will be deceived and be swept away. We run with the Bible. In times like this, you need your Bible. And I pray that the enemy will not take the Bible away from us in Jesus' name. This is a time that people are twisting the Bible up and down and they're applying it in their own way and turning it to sweet themselves. But when you know the word of God, told it to show thyself approved unto God, a what man that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, and the Lord will give us the understanding of the world in Jesus' name. We run the race 
with the great commission, the great commission, the great commission. Understand that the more you preach to others, you are preaching to yourself. To yourself. Maybe I should ask you because this is what I personally feel myself. The more I tell people don't do this, the more I tell people don't do that, uh, I, I, I realize that I'm telling myself the same thing first of all. How about you? When you are preaching to people, the first person you are really preaching to is who? It's yourself. It's yourself. So listen to this. The more you allow compromise in the life of other people is an indication that you are compromising yourself. The more that you are not serious and decisive in dealing with issues of sin in the life of others is an indication that you are are not working with God, that you are a liar, that you have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. But the more you charge somebody, don't steal, you know you stay away from tampering with anything that does not belong unto you. The more you tell people, don't tell a lie, the more you know that if you lie, a greater judgment will come upon you. You, you, you know you check people, you can dress worldly, love not the world, neither the things that in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then you know yourself that you need to comport yourself and position yourself in such a way that you are acceptable not just unto man but unto the God of heaven. And so, you run with the great commission for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How can you be telling people to escape the danger of the world and you are running into that danger? You know what I have discovered? When anybody say, I am saved, I am born again and they are not preaching the gospel anywhere and everywhere is an indication they are not ready for heaven. One of the signs of a true believer is the preaching of the gospel. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always until the end of the world. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will walk with you. The Lord will sustain you. The Lord will support you. The Lord will strengthen you in Jesus' name. Let us be men and women of the world without fear of anybody. Man can only kill the body. They cannot kill your soul. And if you die suddenly, it hastens you up to glory. And what exactly are we really enjoying in the world? What is it that we're enjoying? That we don't want to go. If we really believe heaven, you'll fear no man, you'll fear no one. You will stand for God, stand with God, and declare the total counsel of the Lord. And that is why, as we go about preaching the gospel, we run the race also with confidence. You run with confidence. Paul said, for I am persuaded. Are you persuaded within you? He said, I know whom I have believed. Do you know whom you have believed? When there is problem coming, do you know your God is there? When there are oppositions and challenges, do you have that confidence that if God be with you, nobody can be against you? The Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. So then, you run with the word of comfort. Run the race with the word of comfort. A lot of challenges are out there, but you know, Jesus said, in the world, you will have what? tribulation, but in the Lord, what will you have? There is peace for you in Christ Jesus. In the midst of the storms of life, there is peace for you. And if there is sickness, there is a promise of healing for you. If there is any affliction, there is promise of deliverance for you. If there is anything you are going through, remember, 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 at the end of it, you will make it to glory. The Bible says, Comfort ye one another with this saying, the joy of the Father that our time is limited here on earth, but unlimited in heaven. And when we get over there, it's going to be eternity with God. That is enough to give us the comfort. And then you run the race with clear vision. Clear vision clear vision. You know what you are doing. You know why you are doing what you are doing. And you stay, you stand your ground. No matter what happens, you run the race with the commandments of the Lord. Not the commandments of man. 
And that is why when the apostles were told to stop mentioning the name of Jesus, uh, uh, they, they, they said unto the people, judge yourself, do we obey man rather than God? And so they were obedient to the instructions and the commandments of the Lord in everything that they were doing. And if we are going to win this race we are talking about, then we run the race without compromise. You don't compromise with yourself. You don't, you don't compromise with your wife. You don't compromise with your husband. You don't compromise with your pastor. You don't compromise with your church member. You compromise with nobody. You compromise with no employer, no employee in any way. You compromise with no government. After all, after all, at the end of it, you are the one that will stand before the judgment throne of God to give account for your life. All these other people will not be there with you. Your time together is just for a short period of time. You have your children, and your children will not want you to do the will of God. It's a matter of time. Your son will leave you. Your daughter will leave you. And then it will remain you. What then will you speak of God? Your wife eventually, yes, whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. But a day will come, something will put asunder. Death will put asunder. When your husband dies or your wife dies, what becomes of you? What becomes of you? That is why you let we say, let others see Jesus in you. So run the race without compromise. We run the race without covetousness. A lot of ministers today are covetous. They are in their ministry for what they will eat and what they will drink. Not because of heaven. That's why you have to be careful of who you are listening to and how you are listening to them. What are they talking about? What is their goal? What is their focus? Covetousness has taken over the church today. You also want to run the race without complaining. Complaining complaining. Listen to this. No matter where you go in life, you'll get what you're looking for. If you're looking for an excuse, you'll find an excuse. You are looking for a problem, you find a problem. You are looking for somebody who is not perfect, you'll find somebody who is not perfect. Forget complaining. Be ready for heaven. I said be ready for heaven. I said be ready for heaven. And the Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. Now, as we talk about running the Christian race, what is the opposite of courage? Discouragement. If you put that in another way, what do you call it? It is fear. It is fear. Fear and discouragement, they are doing. That works together. Why is it that some people that started well are backing out of the race. Why is it that some that were excited about serving the Lord, following the Lord, are no more in the faith? Why is it that those that were running before are now standing? Why is it that those that were, that were running before are now sitting and no longer concerned about the things of God? I will show us a few things. Right now, about the causes of fear and the discouragement that hinders courageous running. That hinders courageous running. The causes of fear and discouragement. Some people, when you look at them, it is sin and disobedience unto God. Sin and disobedience. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. We see the case of Adam there. And then in verse 10, and he said, I had thy voice in the garden, and I was, what's the next word? I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Transgression brings fear. Sin brings fear. The same person you have been free to go to before. Now you cannot go freely anymore because of fear. What brought that fear? Sin brought the fear. The person you have been free to call and communicate with easily. Now you can't do that because something wrong had taken place. The Lord himself will help us in Jesus' name. 
fear, uh, uh, dis dis disobedience is one thing. Another thing is disappointment. You have an expectation. And those expectations are not met. Then you are discouraged. And then you the fear of, will I succeed? Will I make it? It's there. And then you want to begin to cut corner. You will not cut corners in Jesus' name. At other times, some people are deceived. And because of deception, they are deterred. They are turned away from the path of life, the path of righteousness, the path of holiness, the path of uprightness. And then you see yourself, you want to get married, and the enemy is deceiving you. Well, in this church, look around how many men are in the church. One, two, three. And how many women are in the church? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three men to ten women. And this church, uh, they don't allow polygamy. What is my chance of getting married? I think I need to begin to look outward. It doesn't work that way. God will give you your own spouse. If it means for God to import the man for you, for your sake, your own will call, how, how wonderful will it be if your husband is important? Somebody say amen. That means it's, it's brand new. It's different from all the common ones. Why don't you say, Lord, I don't care who is here and who is not here. I want the best from you and you get the best from God in Jesus' name. But you know the devil wants to deceive you and tell you, well, uh, why don't you begin to compromise, dress like this, dress like that, change your style, uh, uh, walk like this, uh, so that the people out there will know that, yeah, even though you go to deeper life, but uh, uh, your body is there, deeper life, but your mind is out there in Sodom. You will not be a bastard in Jesus' name. Stand your ground in the Lord. Stay with us. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Or you are in a business and the enemy is telling you, well, in America, even though they say no bribing, but uh, uh, they know the way they do it. And then how they get the business. You know how you cut corner. You know how you give this gift and give that, uh, that gift. And you know you are bribing and you are corrupting yourself. Man may not see, man may not know you are being deceived. If you die in that situation, you will miss heaven. No matter what you have done in the past, deceit will bring fear. And then many a times, a lot of us, when we have done things that are wrong, falling into the deceit, deceit, deceit of the enemy, and then we go to God in prayer. You know what I have discovered in life? When you are not standing right with God, you cannot stand right in prayer. When you're not standing right with God, you cannot speak with authority and with confidence. Instead of you going in prayer and taking authority, you go in prayer and pleading and apologizing every day of your life. You make yourself a servant of sin. A servant of sin. The Lord will deliver in Jesus' name. So, deceit is another thing. The other, at other time, is disease. Some people, because of sickness, because of infirmity that will not go on time. They think, well, I need to seek for help somewhere else. I knew of somebody that was coming to our church. And then it turned out she was sick. And uh, they prayed and nothing seemed to have happened. And later on, before I knew it, I was told they took her to somewhere. And with further inquiry, it was an herbalist place they took her to. To go and get some care. If you get to a point in your life that your God cannot do it, it's a terrible state. And yet, God will allow some things in life to bring out the things that are on the inside of you. If you're a proud person, God will allow some things to bring that pride out. If you're a worldly person, God will allow some things to bring that, uh, uh, that out. If you're not stable with the Lord, God will allow some things to really test and prove you. To cut a long story short, she died before the shrine. She died and went to her fire. I knew of another man that gave his life to Christ and this one I actually worked with him 
And uh, it wasn't of deeper life, but eventually came to deeper life. Everything turned around by the grace of God. Eventually, he felt sea. And then, people were suggesting to him, go here and go there. And he said, no, I am a child of God. My God is able. Even if God chooses not to heal me now, I will not compromise at this last stage of my life. Eventually, he died and he went to glory and I rejoice in the Lord. I pray that your last lap will not be a disaster in Jesus' name. So, disease. And it can be any kind of disease. You know, at other times, it is division in the church. And you don't know something's happened. You don't understand that sometimes the wind blows. And the storm rages. And when the wind is blowing the forest, all the trees, both the tall and the short one, everything blows like this, blows like this. Now understand, the wind is blowing, not because of the healthy trees, but because of the unhealthy one. So that all the unhealthy branches and the limbs and all the unhealthy leaves and that are dry can fall off. You will not fall off in Jesus' name. And then you say, if there can be a division in a church like ours that preaches holiness, there is no division anywhere. I hope you understand. I'm just telling you what happens in different places. Uh, uh, maybe there might have been in the past. I don't know of any right now. So I'm just preaching. And then, you know, say, well, in a church like this, if there could be this kind of division, I don't think I want to stay. Hey, listen, except you remain in the act, you will not be saved. If that can happen in a church that preaches holiness, righteousness, and purity, what then do you think you are going to get out there? What do you think you will get out there? And that is why sometimes some people that think I can stand alone, I can stand by myself, they bolt out of the church. When they get out there and then they test the grounds, they realize that what they thought is bad here is greater, mightier than what is out there. Those of them that have the fear of God, those of them that are determined for heaven, those of them that are humble and really want to make it to the end, they put ego aside, they put aside what man will say, they come back to the church and they say, we are back. You will be back. If in your mind you are gone, I declare today the Holy Ghost will bring you back in Jesus' name. And if physically you are gone, you only came to visit. You have tested out there. You have seen what is going on. I pray the power of God will bring you back into the fold in Jesus' name. The enemy allows some things to happen so that those that are not free, that are not serious, can be, can, can, can be cut off. You will not be cut off in Jesus' name. At all that times, the problem that makes some people to have fear and then quit the faith is their unmet desire. Desires are made. Desires are made. And at other times, at other times, you see some people, it is the sustained, unrelenting battle they are facing. They forgot that the Christian life is a battle. Ephesians chapter 6. Looking at it from verse 10. The Bible tells us, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of, of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we wrestle not against, help me here, flesh and blood, but against one, principalities, two, powers, three, rulers of darkness of this world, and four, spiritual wickedness where in high places they forget that we are in a battle that from the very day you gave your life to Christ you got enlisted in that battle and they forgot that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds every stronghold of the enemy in your life are crumbling in Jesus name Amen. First Samuel chapter 21. First Samuel chapter 21. I'm looking at it from verse 9. First Samuel 21 
verse 9. There in verse 9, the Bible says, And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth, behind the effort, if thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that, give it unto me. Give it unto me. And David arose and fled that day. For, what's the next word? The fear of Saul. The fear of Saul. Fear made people to run away. And went into Achish, the king of God. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? The king of the land? The king of the land? Pay attention here. Put your hand there. He ran away from his place of appointment. He ran away from his place of blessing. And even though he has not been ordained, he has been anointed, but not yet ordained, even the enemies can't know he's an ordained king already. Listen to this. The hand of God is upon you. The power of God is upon you. Stand your ground and don't run in Jesus' name. They did not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David is ten thousand. And David laid up this was where? In his heart. And was so afraid of Achish, the king of God. Now, what drove him away from Israel? Fear. Now, what is happening before Achish, where he ran into? Fear within, fear without. Fear paralyzes. You'll not be paralyzed. Verse 13, and he changed, what's the next word? His behavior. His behavior. Is that not the problem with many of us? Because of fear, we can't stand our ground. We can't declare that we are Christian. We change our conduct, our behavior, our attitude in compromise. He changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his speech fall down upon his beard. That is what fear does. God will deliver you from fear in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings Chapter 19, I look at it from verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and whither how he had slain all the prophets all, uh, with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. And much also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them, by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servants there. Who are we talking about here? Elijah. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might you will not die you will not die lift up your right hand right now and say in the name of Jesus I shall not die but leave to declare the great work of the Lord in the name of Jesus the Lord will keep you the Lord will preserve you you know thank you put on your hands Elijah quit the ministry before his time you will not quit before your time in Jesus' name. Christian calling and ministerial calling. Go back with unlimited power from above and supported by the brethren and the local church. Experiences have told us that power from above is not sufficient for some people. And because of fear, they run from their place of refuge. They run from their place of protection. And they run to the camp of the enemy. They will not run to the camp of the enemy in Jesus' name. We are told in the book of uh, Timothy, 
First Timothy, I look at chapter 1, verse 7. There the Bible says that um, First Timothy, chapter 1, First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, desiring to be teachers of the law, um, understanding neither what they say or where they affirm. I think I'm getting the wrong thing. I'm trying to get the place where the Bible says that God has not given unto us the spirit of fear. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Thank you. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Somebody say amen. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is your portion. That is my portion in Jesus name. God is not the author of fear. Anytime you are afraid of making it, that is the enemy coming your way. Get rid of the enemy and you will make it in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. Exodus chapter 14. We look at the 10th verse there. It says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Now, two things happen here. When they saw the enemy, they were afraid. But something good happened. What did they do? They cried unto the Lord. Don't run away from the presence of the Lord. Remain in the Lord. No matter how you are feeling, call upon the Lord. Sometimes it is human. But never allow fear to overwhelm you, to overtake you. Peter was in the boat. He saw Jesus walking on the water. And then he said, Jesus, if that be you, bid me to come. He had the courage at that time. And then Peter, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith, with that faith, he stepped out. And you know Peter was a fisherman. Peter knew much more than that, that the water is not a solid rock. You step into it, you drown. But then, he kept looking unto Jesus. Jesus, is that you looking unto Jesus? And then, I could imagine Peter bringing out the first leg out of the boat and then trying to put it in the water. And then, as he touches the water, it was solid under him. Is it real? Is it real? Is it real? On Christ, a solid rock I stand. All other ground are sinking sand. But pay attention. After Peter brought the second leg out, he was standing. He was walking. Is it real? And then Peter suddenly realized, I am on top of the water. Supposing it is just an ice that formed. And everything gives way. What becomes of me? The moment Peter began to think of that in fear, what happened to Peter? He began to sink. You will not sink in Jesus' name. But then Peter did something good. He did something good. He did not call unto the other apostles because he knew they cannot help. Sometimes you are going to someone that cannot help you. What did he do? He cried unto the Lord and the Lord saved him. He will save you. You know, at another time, at another time, at another time, I'm just saying that just paradventure, something happened and fear came, came in, not because of sin, but because of the wind of life, because of the storm of life that wants to make you give up your faith. You call on God, you cry unto God. Christ was in the boat with the disciples. And then in Mark chapter 4, and then as they were traveling, then the wind, the storm, understand, in this life, the wind will blow. The storm will rage. But they will not overtake you. And then Jesus was resting. And as the, the wind was blowing and the storm raging, it was beating into the bowl. And water was coming in. Now the people there understand they were fishermen. They did not jump out of the boat. They remained there. What did they do? They cried to the Lord, Master, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Many a times you have issue. You are running to unbelievers. Many a times you have a problem. You are running back to your family. 
call upon the Lord, he will make a way for you. And then Jesus rose up, he rebuked the wind, he rebuked the storm, and everything became calm. In your life, peace be still. In your family, peace be still. On your job, peace be still. That problem in your body, I speak right now, peace be still in Jesus' name. None of all those will take you away from the Lord. None of all those will shift your faith and focus away from the King of Glory in Jesus' name. All these things causes a problem. You know, sometimes it's because we overestimate the enemy. That's the reason for fear. They will do this, they will do that. You forgot that you are a man and a woman of authority. That the Bible says that you shall declare a thing, decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. No matter how you want things to be in life, you are a king. Decree it and it will come to pass. The problem is we overestimate the power of the enemy and we under underestimate ourselves. And then we have forgotten that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. Through God. You know, at other times, some people is self-confidence. Self-confidence. Tell me somebody in the Bible that self-confidence almost destroyed him. Peter. Peter. Instead of self-confidence, put your confidence in the Lord. I said, put it in the Lord. And it will keep you to the end in Jesus' name. At other times, it is the statistics of people that have fallen. When you look at this one, that has happened, that one, that has happened. And then you look at some people you met in the church, you met in the faith, and the way they are living their life, um, even though they talk about, they preach about it, but they are not living the life. And then your service is, uh, I don't think this thing is real. For as long as you're in this tabernacle, you can't live above sin. It's a lie. You can live above sin. Tell somebody, you can live above sin. I said, tell somebody, you can live above sin. And say to somebody, you are now saying to somebody, I will live above sin. If you will not, I will. By the grace of God, I will. With the help of God, I will. By the power of God, I will. I will make it to the end in Jesus' name. I have a good news for you. I said I have a good news for you. I have some brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers that run this race and they made it to the end. And every time I go through, you think overseer doesn't go through challenge? You think pastor doesn't go through challenge? You think superintendent doesn't go through challenge? Everybody does. Everybody does. But whenever it happens, those of us that are standing, this is what we do. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from God, the maker of heaven. And, end. and then we look at people like Peter. Peter made it. I will make it. Paul the apostle made it. I will make it. Moses that initially with because of fear ran away from Egypt to, 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 to the wilderness. Moses eventually made it. Look at Elijah we read about a few minutes ago that ran away from a woman. <laughs> Who is pursuing you? A woman? A Jezebel? What to that Jezebel? Don't run from that Jezebel. Because God has given you power and authority over that Jezebel. Decree it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Who is that individual? And Ahab? Wanting to take your life that he took the life of Naboth? No. If God be for us. No. I said if God be for us. Nobody can be against you. You will not die. You will not die. You will not die. Moses was told by God, go back to Pharaoh. Go back to Pharaoh. And he went back to Pharaoh. And he finished his ministry. 
you will finish your ministry. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13, causes of fearlessness. Joshua chapter 5, we're looking at the 13th verse there. There the Bible says, verse 13, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversary? Hmm. Verse 14. And he said, Nay. Nay. But as the captain of the host of the Lord, I am come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What said thou, uh, my Lord, unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is what? Is holy, and Joshua did so. Pay attention here, look up here. Joshua taught he was alone leading Israel. Joshua did not know or realize that there is an invisible personality working with him. Joshua thought maybe it was just uh, 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 setting up the stone and doing this and that that made them to cross the Red Sea. Joshua did not realize that there is somebody that the sea saw, that Jordan saw, that made things to happen. Very quickly, we are coming back to this. Open your Bible to the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm. I believe it's 114. Psalm 114. I will, I'll wait for you to get there. Psalm 114. If you are there, say amen. If you are not yet there, say wait for me. All right, we are waiting. Amen, but hurry up. Because this race must be with speed, with focus and determination. Praise the Lord. Now if you are there, say amen. All right, Psalm 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel is dominion. The sea. So you are listening to our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye or other anointed minister of God from our ministry. Let the words sink in your heart and they will do you good throughout your whole life. It is our belief by the grace of the Lord that you will come and worship with us at Deeper Life Bible Church. For number 4656 Bravo Drive. We have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30 and we have our Bible study on every Monday from 7 to 8.30. As you are doing so, and the grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and you will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you.